What is going on guys? This is Danny from My Flying Eyes and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, an issue that is recently uh, being pointed out uh, as the National Park Services uh, requiring um, to get a permit to film a YouTube video or TikTok or any video that you're uploading to social media uh, because they consider it a commercial filming. So um, I'm going to talk about just uh, my thoughts and feelings as a normal guy. I'm not a lawyer, um, but why, what I feel about this and what I think about this. Well, my initial thought it is that I think that this is absolutely abusive and wrong um, because they are asking us to apply for a permit, pay a fee, uh, which I'm not sure how much it is, but it's it is around from two hundred to three hundred dollars. I understand applying three thirty days in advance, um, and then you have to also, you know, um, write the details of what you are intending to film, even though most of the times in these kinds of videos you don't you don't even know what you're going to fi film. You just go in a an adventure or a trip into a national park and then you go on filming whatever you see and you change plans all the time so but they are requiring you to give a detail of everything that you're going to film and sometimes they also require you to hire a chaperone uh, someone from the National Park Services to be at all times with you while you're filming and also paying this person fifty dollars an hour, so the whole thing it, it can upscale to I don't know five hundred dollars probably. So that does that make sense if you're filming by yourself, just with one camera, probably your phone, your GoPro, or a crew of not more than two or three people. Uh, to me, it doesn't make any sense. I understand if there's a big production company that is going to require to close a section of a park for themselves to shoot a big production. Uh, they're getting a lot of cameras, a lot of people catering, um, I don't know, makeup teams and all, all the sort of things that the big production companies they use and they're, they're going to require to keep a section of a park keep the public to enjoying the section of the park for themselves. Well, I understand if you require them to pay a fee for that, which I also understand that the fee that they require to the big companies, it is ridiculously low. <laughs> so uh, in comparison to what they are investing and what they are doing. So, um, so I understand if you want to raise also that fee for the big production companies, but to me, uh, asking us small individual guys, uh, just because we upload a, a video to YouTube or TikTok to require to uh, for a permit in advance, uh, pay for it, even though if the permit is not granted, they keep your money, they don't give you the money back, and also require for uh, for all the details of what you're going to film, and also require for uh, to hire a chaperone or someone to be with you at all times. That, to me, it sounds not practical, abusive, and nonsense. Um, that's my first feeling about it um, but you know like a lot of people say well we have to respect the rules but the, the big question here is what are, what are the rules because I've seen that the lately that's being uh, confu confusing you know well they say that this uh, we are under the rule of law which means that no one is above the law so what what does the the rule of law means? Well, there are different levels of rules, which is um, uh, probably uh, it start with the constitution about everything, and then you have the laws, the federal laws, and then you have the state laws, and then you have the the decrees of the mandates. And when let's say a rule overrides 
another rule, which is at the higher level, it prevails the, the, the higher level rule. Let's say a mandate overrides a state law. Well, it prevails the state law. A state law overrides a federal law, it prevails the federal law. And if any of these over, overrides the constitution, it prevails the constitution. That's, that's what, uh, what I understand by the rule of law. And also, it means that no figure of authority is above the law. Even the president or any judge or uh, any, any figure of authority, no one is above the law, which means that no one is above the constitution. Um, so I, I've seen a video of a lawyer explaining the legal aspects of this, uh, this new rule. And a lot of people and, and a lot of YouTubers are pointing out that it overrides the constitution. Uh, um, it violates a couple of amendments. I, I'm not, I'm, I don't remember exactly which ones, but it overrides the constitution. So should we follow this rule? when overrides a rule of a higher level? Well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, what I've seen that is most of the people that they say, they say, they point out, you have to uh, respect the rules. They don't respect the rules. They don't even know what the rules are. You know, they, ch they respect something different, which is the figure of authority. And w what is the figure of authority? Well, probably some, someone wearing a an uniform and carrying a gun, or a politician, or even someone speaking through the massive media, you know, like a journalist with a suit and a tie telling them what to do. That's what they see as a figure of authority, even though what they're telling is bi totally violates the law or the constitution. So that's what I find out lately, that most of the people that said that we should respect the rules, they don't even know what the rules are. So uh, going back to, to, this, uh, to this rule, uh, it, it is very confusing because they say that you should apply and pay for a, a fee and apply for a permit if you are going to film with uh, a commercial, you know, filming, the intent of commercial filming. So what if you go and you shoot something without any intentions of making money out of it, but then, you know, you upload it to YouTube and then later on it's something happens and it gets viral and then your channel got monetized and then you start making money. Is it did you film that with the intention of making money? No. So is that commercial filming? Well, that's a gray area. Um, another gray area is that, for instance, my my channel, my YouTube channel, is not monetized. But it, even though it's not monetized, YouTube put advertising on my channel, but I'm not making money. So is that commercial activity? Well, for, for them, probably yes, because YouTube is making money, but not me. So how, how comes I, I, I'm involved in a commercial activity when I'm not making money? <laughs> you know, so they should they find me? I don't think so. If YouTube is making money, okay, go and charge YouTube, not me. Um, so, and then, you know, I find out, because, you know, I'm a songwriter. I, I'm a part of the songwriter, songwriters uh, community. So we've been dealing with the Department of Justice and because of the uh, of the streaming royalty, and we we've been dealing with YouTube, um, and we find out that the Department of Justice were acting corporate, you know, as a corporation with YouTube with the when they set up our um, our uh, streaming royalty. Well, this is another subject, but they were acting as a corporation. They were teaming up. We actually ended ended up suing the Department of Justice because of this, because of the conflict of interest. Well, that's how ridiculous these things are. But I'm not getting into that. Uh, let's go back to the National Park uh, Service. Service. Let's not forget that this is service uh, requiring for a permit. Another argument that they are uh, saying is that if you are making money, where's our cut of it, the National Park Service? Well, that sounds like a mafia, you know? Like they want to come out of uh, our end in every every penny that we make. Well, why should you be coming 
out of our end and, and taking a, a piece of every dime that I make. Well, you're already making money out of every penny that we make because it is the government and we pay taxes to the government. So even though the National Park is not getting anything out of it, the government is, which is the one collecting our taxes that they are paying the National Park Services. So the National Park Service is, is a service that we are paying through our taxes. So why should they be getting money out of something that we make? Well, I don't see a reason for that. I'm sorry. Um, it is a service, you know. And are the national parks private property? No, they are public land, which means it belongs to the public, it, which means it belongs to us. So why should we pay for something that it belongs to us? They are acting like it, if it is private property, but it's not. <laughs> it's not a federal land does not belong to the government. It belongs to the people. The, the government, well, maybe not, but it's supposed to be public. So it's supposed to belong to the public, which means it belongs to the people, which means us. And the National Park Service, it is a service that they supposed to be serving us. <laughs> they are our servants. Yes, they are public servants, which means they serve us. They shouldn't be acting as if they own the, the, the property that is as if it is private property because it is not. <laughs> so to me, that doesn't make any sense that they should be taking a cut because they are already taking a cut of every penny that we make, which that's how our, they're getting paid, which we are paying them. So why, why they want more money? It doesn't make any sense. And because they are already getting money, because they are charging a cover to get into the park. You know, I, I pay the $80 annual fee to get into the national parks. So, and another thing that I want to point out, it's a confusion, you know, this will bring a lot of confusion. Why? Because most of the stuff that I shoot, most of the footage that I shoot in national parks, I haven't posted yet. You know, I haven't had the time to edit any, a lot of the videos that I shoot in national parks. So what if I start editing and posting those videos, which I'm going to do right now, even though, you know, um, probably I wasn't <laughs> planning to do, and then they come after my channel and they say, well, you post a video um, of Dead Valley National Park, let's say, and you haven't applied for the permit. And they say, well, I shoot all of that before the rule was in place. So how are they going to act and, you know, react to, to me? How, how is that going to work? So then they're going to ask me to prove it in court. How, you know, so then I have to go all out of my way to prove or they have to prove that I should it after the rules. I, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer again, but how is that going to work? <clears throat> Let's say you shoot something now and then you, you can say, well, I should before the rule was in place. So how, how is that going to work? It's, it's confusing and it's it's kind of like not practical. So I, I've seen a lot of YouTubers that they came out with this practical and easy solution, easy solution of making the fee more affordable and more easy to get Let's the, the permit. I mean, the permit and the fee, let's say, when you enter the park, you say, okay, I want to film a video, vacation video, whatever. And they say, okay, yes, pay $50 and here is the permit and here is uh, whatever, a map or whatever. You know, they have to give you something if you're paying. So they, they, a lot of YouTubers have seen that they, they point out this as the easy solution. Well, I think it's plain wrong because maybe, maybe the ultimate goal 
of them was to settle into that easy solution. So then they start asking for something that is ridiculous and abusive and not practical and um, tyrannical, let's say. So then when they settle into this easy solution, you feel good because you get something out of, uh, you know, a fight, let's, let's say. But you, they're still getting your money when they shouldn't. So I don't think that we should pay anything because the land belongs to us. It is our land. It is public land. And the government is already getting a, a, a cut on everything that we make. And then it is not, in my case, it's not commercial. And we are not requiring to to alter in any way the, the the normal functioning of the park. So why should we pay? It doesn't make any sense. So um, I don't know. This is my feeling. I strongly advise to don't pay anything. And um, and also because our videos are helping the park because are getting more people into the park if that is what they want but maybe they don't want more people into the park in fact maybe what they want with this is to restrict access to nature and the parks otherwise it doesn't make any sense to me what they're doing well a lot of things doesn't make sense uh, lately to me uh, when when it comes to the government you know I don't want to get into that but this is the government acting as if it is not public, if it is a private corporation. With some people that it's in, in natural law, they say that this is the reality of things, that the government is not public anymore and it is a corporation. Well, I don't know. I don't want to get into that. That's a very controversial issue, the natural law thing. Uh, but to me, this fee that they and the permit that they're requiring us to get is absolutely ridiculous it is abusive i don't like to be abused by anyone it, it sounds to me it sounds like the mafia like i got the gun i get to set whatever i want and you have to give me your money <laughs> to me it sounds like that um okay guys this is all uh, i hope um, you you point out what you feel about this uh, what your what are your thoughts um, and I wish that more people do videos like this and point out because if they see a massive reaction, uh, they probably, um, they probably, you know, they change their mind. I've seen this. The, the government is always watching our reactions and always, you know, um, you know, analyzing how much they can they can go you know how far they can go uh in this case <laughs> on our pockets okay um this is annie from my flying eyes on the national parks uh filming permit bye bye